I got it all. You got it? You sure you can handle this? After all this time, I think you can trust me that I got it figured out. I don't know. All right. Good morning, everyone. It, uh, it's good to see you all um, here today in worship with us. Um, we have a few announcements. I'm going to start with the first one, which is we are hoping, and I say hoping and tentatively planning to return to in-person worship um, June 14th. Um, that being said, there could be some hiccups. We're going to continue to watch uh, and, and hope for decline and those things so that we can, you know, if there's sudden spikes and stuff, we've got very gifted people who will say, well, maybe we need to get back. Um, you don't need me. All right, can you hear me now? All right, so, yeah. We're good. Okay. Got a thumbs up from someone. Okay. So with that, um, and then also barring, we've had to pick up some extra technology so that we could continue to provide online worship for everybody. So as that kind of streams in and trickles in the pieces for that, we're going to give some test runs. Um, but if we have some hiccups, we want to make sure that it's hospitable for those who maybe don't feel comfortable yet being back in worship or can't make it so that we still have the online access. Um, with that, it will not be done through Zoom. It will be done via YouTube or Facebook Live. Again, that's something we've got to, we're going to test run when it all gets here, which should be here session members sooner than we thought. Yay! Um, <laughs> so, and then worship itself will look different. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that right now. Uh, be on the lookout. The newsletter will have the letter that um, I'm sending out. You'll also get an email just with the letter. And many of you will also get physical copies of the letter so that we are all ready and know what to expect in worship in terms of how it will look different for the time being um, as we continue to try to be the body of Christ and do the work and do it safely and worship safely and uh, keep everyone safe and healthy um, in this odd, strange time. So I think that's about it with worship back in person, potentially June 14th, hopefully June 14th, um, and we'll go from, from there. So be on the lookout for more information. Um, we will keep pumping it out in all the different ways. So um, next, we're just gonna, do we have any other announcements? I don't think so. I don't think Nothing so. so. Uh, okay, so we'll have some prayer concern. We have prayer concerns. Wes Williams, um, which you may know Tegan Williams. Uh, that is her dad. Um, Tegan is Kim and Ron's granddaughter. Um, it, her dad is in the hospital. He had to go undergo surgery for his pancreas. Um, there were some compl complications. There's an, another surgery, ICU. So lots of prayers for Wes um, in this time. And then also Taken. Um, as a, she's a teenager now, right? Yeah. But yeah. But as one of our youth and um, just trying to, to, well, having to grow up way too fast. So lots of prayers there um, for Taken and uh, also Kim and Ron in this time. Um Good news on the prayer front, Morgan Saucer, is it Saucer? No, I, I, Morgan, the Saucer's granddaughter, uh, underwent surgery for her brain tumor. Um, they were able to get 99% of it out and uh, is gonna make a, looks like she's gonna make a great recovery and they all want, they wanted to let us know that the prayers were much appreciated. Um, Bree, which is Diane Daugherty's niece, um, they were able to remove, you got more of that information, remove the tumor. Yep. Uh, there are more tests and therapies still to come, but the surgery was successful. Yep. And okay. she'll have some more surgeries with a feeding tube, or she might've had them already, Okay, um, but feeding tube and line for chemo and all of that. Stuff. So still lots of prayers there um, for Brie, which is Diane Darty's niece. Um, Morgan Larson. Thank you. I'll write that right now. Yeah. 
Um, and is that it? I think so, oh, unless somebody else has. Remember, put them in the chat. If you have prayer concerns, type them in the chat and we'll, uh, so. All right, well, I don't have any more announcements. So this is the day the Lord has made. Please join me in the call to worship. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in God's works. Who looks on the earth, on the earth and touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praise to my God while I have being. May my meditation, May my meditation be to God, to God, for I rejoice in the Lord. In the Lord. Bless, Bless the, the Lord, 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 my soul. Praise, praise the Lord. The Lord. <laughs> Do not hide your face from us, Lord God. Turn to us as we turn to you in repentance. Hear our confession. Forgive our sin. Grant us the new life you promise as we pray first silently and then collectively. And praying together, God of wind and flame, you pour out your spirit to all your children, all your children, empowering the least and the lofty, the lofty tale of your mighty deeds. Your mighty deeds. We hear the sound, we hear the sound of the heat, feel the but instead of recognizing, recognizing your presence your among us. us we sneer and, 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 and refuse to believe you speak to people we would not choose to proclaim your message. Forgive, forgive us, us for attempting, for attempting to, limit to limit your spirit, silence our cynicism, our cynicism and, possess and possess us with your word of grace. Of grace. Make us your witnesses, your witnesses those who break those down, who break down walls, dividing walls, people, People and relish the new community made possible through the life and life of the life of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Come, Holy Come, Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. God will not always accuse, nor will the Lord harbor anger forever. God does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is God's love for those who fear the Lord. As far as the east is from the west, so far has God removed our transgressions from us. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. Through Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Also with you. Yeah, I'm hard with that. All right, so. Oh, I think I did it. Hold on. We yeah, did we, did we did it. We did it. So on my, or on the screen, Hopefully you see some friends of ours. Those are the Becker boys who their headbands say filled with the Holy Spirit. They look that festive and have such great headbands because today is a day of celebration. It is Pentecost or the birthday of the church and the Becker boys made those headbands to remind us that on the first Pentecost, Pentecost, excuse me, the Holy Spirit came down and put tongues of fire on people's heads and everyone started speaking in different languages 
Um, and it kind of looked like the boys look in that picture with the fire <laughs> on their head. Um, and so those, that picture and those headbands are helping us to remember that today is a day of celebrating. Yes, the world is a sad and scary place right now. There are a lot of hurting and sick people. Maybe not any more than usual, but it feels like it. But today, in spite of all of that, the Holy Spirit is still here to comfort us, to guide us, to move us forward when we get stuck in life, to always be with us. The Holy Spirit, like we talked about last week, is a comforter, the one who protects us, but also sometimes makes us go into a little bit of a scary place to share God's love and light and fire like the boys headband show us. So friends, whether you are the youngest of disciples in our midst or the oldest of disciples, I hope this picture and the reminder that today is Pentecost inspires you to go out into the world and make a difference. Maybe it's just with your neighbor across the street. Maybe it's just with some sidewalk chalk messages to let people know they're loved. Maybe it's something much bigger and bolder than even I can imagine. But whatever it is today, go out with the spirit, with the tongues of fire, and be filled with the Holy Spirit today and always. Amen. Oh, work with that. Brothers and sisters, let us go to God in prayer. Holy God, we are grateful for that spirit that gives us wisdom and guidance, that takes us to new places, forces us out of our comfort zone, that spirit that is you, that comes from you, and that dwells in each and every one of us as your beloved children. Let us be united by that spirit by our commonality in who we are as your created people. And open up to us your word read and proclaimed that we may hear your voice and your truth living into your love and grace. We pray this in Christ's name. Amen. Oh, there it is. Oh. Okay. That worked. There you go. <laughs> Our scripture today comes from Paul's letter to the Corinthians, his first letter. Um, chapter 12, verses 4 through 13. Let us be attentive to a word from the apostle. Now there, are a now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Holy Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discernment of spirits. To another, various kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. All these activated by one and the same Spirit, who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one Spirit we are all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Happy Pentecost. Happy birthday, church. Woo! We should have cake and ice cream um, from afar and blow out some candles. It's a lot of candles. Um, but this is that day every year that we celebrate and we recognize that descending of the Spirit upon the church. Jesus has been talking to us in the lectionary for weeks about, I'm sending my comforter, my advocate. I, you know, I'm sending the one who will care for you, who will advocate for you, who will give you gifts, who will push you forward, who will drive you insane, who will make you do things that you don't want to do. Today is the day. Today is the day that, that we celebrate that fire descending upon the disciples, 
on the celebration of that holy day of Pentecost, where people heard the first for the first time the gospel, the gospel in their tongue, their language, and they understood it. Now, I love that story because there's always that pass off line. Well, these guys are drunk. What, because all of a sudden they're speaking another language and you understand them? They're drunk? And then Peter, of course, says, it's only nine o'clock in the morning. It's way too early to be drunk and stops that conversation. But they, they, they present, they share the good news, the good news of resurrection, of new life, of hope and love, of grace and peace with people who had never heard it before, with people who desperately needed to hear it, bringing the whole body together, bringing the whole of these people together, uniting this, the, the spirit, uniting them, forming, initiating the early church. And, and, and the thing is that happened that day, that Pentecost day, when they were celebrating Pentecost, is all of a sudden all these people here and they go to all these different places, able to, to, to preach, to, to teach, to, to share their gifts and talents and say where they got them and to love people unconditionally. They go to, to Corinth and they go to Ephesus and, and they spread all over, especially the, the Greek and Roman world, the Middle East, and even farther, having heard this word, having heard this word of hope and new life. And, and, and it was for a church in a specific time and a specific place that this happens. And, and, and in the same way that spirit comes upon us, live, I believe, dwells in each of us, giving us the gifts and talents, giving us the means and, and the necessities to, to, to go forth and do the same as they did, to bring the church and the people together to remind us of our common humanity, to remind us of the hope that is able to be found in Jesus Christ. There's a very specific time and place, though. We have to remember that. And, and personally, in this specific time, it seems a bit out of balance, tossed about. We feel broken. I mean, we've been disconnected uh, relationship-wise, so, so to speak, by, by a pandemic, but, we, but we've been disconnected long before that in many other ways. We've been disconnected because we, as people, love to separate each other. We like to, 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 to silo ourselves and individuals so that then if I don't have to be vulnerable, I don't have to step outside my comfort zone, if I can label and say, this person is this. Paul's letter Paul's most of letters, especially to Corinthians, the biggest themes are often unity within the church and within the people. We have a bunch of Christians who, who talked about Christ back then, and they divided themselves. It's nothing new, right? We, we, we do it now. We did it then into very distinct groups. The divisions they held as superiority uh, over other ones. Well, I'm I'm a follower of Apollos. And it, so what it was, was it was in many ways in the rabbinic tradition, you would, you would, you would be a follower of that certain rabbi. So they would say, we followed the way, which is Jesus, but specifically, I'm, I'm a fall. I, I belong to the, to the line of thought of Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Lydia. And in that moment, though, the, the Cephians would say that they did things better. The Lydians would think that they were better at doing or believing or functioning in this way, whatever. And Paul is always writing, perpetually writing, to be united, to, to, to stop all this. Uh, we, we, he, in, in Galatians, there is no Jew, no Greek, no slave, no free, no male, no female. All of that is, is, is gone. We are to find the common bond. Even today at the end of our scripture, we, we have a common bond. I want to I wanna, I wanna play a little something for you. I was actually going to play it before my sermon, but kind of got caught up in the moment. So I want to play a little something for you. And uh, if you don't like classical music, well, deal with it and just listen. Um, but I want, I want you to listen to it. And here's what I want you to hear. 
and, and we've we've seen orchestras and we've seen I actually don't want you to hear anything I just want you to to take a moment and hear the the complexity um, we've seen orchestras we know orchestras are made up of many different pieces so I, I, I Okay, what you just heard was a bit of the third movement from Tchaikovsky's Symphony Number no. Six. Um, the first two movements of that symphony are are, are simple. Um, they seem simple. They're they're low, beautiful. This is this is the climax of it. Um, it is incredible. You hear the strings and the clarinets and then the, the timpanis and, and the horns come blaring in there at the end and we didn't even finish the whole movement of it. But if you could watch the conductor, it's, 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 it's really fun to watch him because he's, he's making eyes and he's giving hand movements to certain ones who, who it's almost like they start to get out of line. He's like, come on back, come on back. You're not more important strings which there's a joke in, I wish the Landeroses were here. Because, they oh, they are? Good. There's a joke I heard that the, the strings always think they're the most important part of the symphony, and then you build on, on that, um, but, or the orchestra. So, yes, you hear predominant pieces here and there. You hear big instruments from time to time, um, and, and, but without the strings and without the, the flutes and without the timpanis and without all of it together, you have a beautiful piece of music, but you don't have that goosebump causing oh, just the, the punch in the chest movement without all of it. We, brothers and sisters, we are the orchestra. We are the orchestra. Every single person is the orchestra of life with a different gift and a different talent. And, and, and we all have to be present and active and moving and when any of us any of us it isn't or, or isn't able to then we we miss that goosebump causing moment when we think our gifts and talents are more important and there's many gifts and talents 
Paul just throws a few out. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, trust, faith and trust there can be interchanged. Healing, miracles, prophecy, discernment, tongues, interpretation of tongues. All Over and over he says, the same spirit, the same spirit, one Lord, same spirit, same spirit gives us. Wisdom, knowledge, faith and trust and miracles and prophecy and discernment, all of which come from that one spirit. In other letters, Paul says these, these gifts and talents are all great, but if they are ever done without love, they are absolutely worthless. If they are done without the commonality of the spirit and without love, they are useless gifts. They are gifts that are to never be used. And he says, none of them are better than the other. I think the greatest gift Paul is trying to get us to remember we have is to be unified, is to be together, to be bound together by God to one another. Carl Bart says you have to, to, to be a good preacher, you got to preach with the Bible in one hand. I have one right here. The Bible in one hand and heck, the newspaper in the other. There's been a lot going on in our world, and we don't have to take more than a minute or two, and it doesn't matter whatever news outlet you, you prescribe to, to see that we aren't unified as a church, as a nation, as, as, as a people on a whole. We're not. We're not capable of doing it right now. And, I, and we are constantly dividing ourselves and being divided over here and over here. We like to draw hard lines in the sand. We like to say who's acceptable and who isn't. And, and, and we are constantly internally building walls so that we don't have to deal with what we've deemed as different, as not as much value. The unity is the greatest gift the Spirit gives us. It's the greatest calling, I believe, too. It's the greatest calling to bring a divided body of people together. We, we say it Sunday in and Sunday out when we use the Apostles' Creed. We are the one holy Catholic church. Now, we're having a new Presbyterian or not new Presbyterian, what it means to be a Presbyterian class. And I've had many of the question from the visitor that says, wait, why did we say we're the one Catholic church? You guys are Catholic? I thought, you know, there was a thing in your pres. I didn't know I was coming to a Catholic church. No, it, Often we've changed the Apostles' Creed. It's, it's the one universal church. The Catholics, the Presbyterians, the Lutherans, all of us. All of us. Bound together. Same spirit. I, it's incredibly powerful when we do that. It's, the world will look and can look drastically different. Uh, um, one of my favorite bands is Dropkick Murphys, and they did a show um, from, um, they live streamed a show from Fenway Park on Friday, and they, they play this song every show, and it's probably one of my favorite songs, it's called Boys on the Docks, and it goes, say, hey, Johnny, Johnny boy, the battle call, united we stand, divided we fall, together we are what we can't be alone, we can't, and then it goes in, but they refrain that chorus, the battle call, united we stand, divided we fall. We are what we can't be alone. I, I have gifts and talents, but my gifts and talents are only blown up and made even better when I'm around others. Others who are different, others who, who, who may not agree, who may not, but we work together for a common good. And it has to start with us as a church. It has to start with the church. We have to be willing to sit with our other church members who look different, who we may have preconceived notions, who, who vote different, who believe different, who pray different, so we can grow and we can listen. It's, it's not so that we can listen to them so that we can respond and tell them why their point of view is wrong or why they're brainwashed or whatever but that we can seek to understand and come to a third way or, or to be better so that we can share our gifts and talents. Not so that we can say that I'm better because I have this point of view or I understand this. We have to 
we have to be the ones who initiate the healing of the broken wound, the brokenness, the bonds that have been broken. Where do we start? Well, right now I see two ways to start. First, we start here, me. I start on myself. I have to do the work myself. I have to recognize that others are children of God, that another person who I disagree with is, is a child of God. They're not just some idiot or, or they're some fool who can't think of themselves or something like that. They're children of God, that those who agree with, those who don't believe the same as I believe, those who, who don't even believe at all. Uh, one of my favorite moments at youth group is we had a youth go, wait, if everybody's created in the image of God, and they're all beloved children of God, does that mean that the atheist was also created in the image of God? Well, everybody's created in the Imago Dei, the image of God. And we watch their head kind of explode for a moment. We have to start there to do the work. Start at the base that we are all human and we are all worthwhile. We have to start tearing away the layers of dehumanization. Brene Brown says, when we desecrate their divinity, we desecrate our own. We betray our own faith. That means that she, she uses some good examples, and I'm going to share a couple. If we are offended or hurt when you hear Hillary Clinton or Maxine Walters called any sort of awful name for a female, you should be equally offended and hurt when you hear the same words used to describe Ivanka Trump, Kellyanne Conway, and Theresa May. It felt belittled when Hillary Clinton called Trump supporters a basket of deplorables. Then you should feel should have felt equally concerned when Eric Trump said Democrats aren't even human. I like those. I know they're political, but what I like about them is that's kind of the realm we see every day. If, if I am hurt because they call someone on one side of the aisle something, and then that person on that side of the aisle calls other person a similar thing. I need to be offended both ways. I need to stand up and rehumanize everyone. It's our call. It's the same with race. It's the same with religion. We have to do the work and not tolerate the destruction of others' humanity on the basis of race, belief, age, politics, whatever it happens to be, we are to be united. And the other part is to learn, to, to learn from the other, to build relationships with people who differ from us, not to prove our gifts and thoughts and ideas that are given by that one spirit are in there, but to learn, to legitimately openly learn about their experience. I'm going to tell you a story. 19-year-old, well, 18-year-old white Dan Barry White Dan from Wyoming comes to central Nebraska. He plays football with three really awesome guys and is on the track squad with three awesome guys, Dre, Nate, and Uzo, all of which are African-American. They're from Denver. So one of our other friends, hey, let's go on this little road trip through Nebraska to this place they were doing something. And I still don't understand why Dre, Nate, and Uzo said yes. But we all went. We ended up stopping to grab some gas in a small town in rural Nebraska. We all got out of the car, and I ran in to go to the bathroom. And in the midst of that, I heard, as I was going to the bathroom, what are you boys doing here? And I was like, hmm, okay. D passed it off. I didn't think anything of it. My experience dictates boys means... <sighs> As it progressed further, the gentleman then followed Dre, Nate, and Uzo around the store, making sure that they didn't steal anything, pestering them to get out of his store. All the while, I was left alone to rummage in the back, find what I needed, and, and go to the counter and buy it. And it struck me in the car as I was sitting in the back. That experience wasn't the same for all of us. That experience wasn't even close. Then they said, unfortunately, they've come to expect it. 
and be used to it. It was a long quiet ride for me and stunned in that time. And that's when I came to the point that I had to learn more. So I spent a lot of time with Dre, Nate, and Uzo. Um, I actually became the, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the token, <laughs> the token whitehead. Um, because I had to learn. I, I had no idea what their experience was like. I had no idea what they went through, what was perceived about them. Um, anytime we have the chance, chance to learn from another's experience it doesn't have to be like that one it can be drastically different it can be far different than that we, we take the time to do so to hear their experience hear their humanity church god the spirit is calling us to humanize one another to unite one another we make up the orchestra playing the symphony of life we need every piece of that orchestra in tune, playing at the same level, doing that beautiful piece because right now we feel out of tune. We feel like some sections are maybe think they're more important or, or, or trying to play over others and trying to, and some sections are simply just trying to be heard. And it's time that we look to our conductor look to our conductor in the spirit and lean in, tune up, listen to one another, play with one another, learn from one another so that all parts are heard equally, beautifully, and that this whole world becomes the place that God has been working to redeem since God did what God had did so long ago. Brothers and sisters, Go from here, leaning into the spirit, living into your gifts and your call, bringing us all together. In the name of Christ. Amen. Having heard the word read and proclaimed, let us say together what it is we believe. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept ourselves and the love of God and neighbor. And binds us together, together with all believers, believers in all the one body of Christ, Christ, of Christ, the church. The same spirit that inspired the prophets, the apostles, the rulers of faith and life in Christ, in Christ through Scripture. Engages us in the words proclaimed, claims us in the waters of water, feeds us in the bread of life, of life, of salvation, tells women and men, all in the of the truth. In broken and fearful world, it gives us to pray without ceasing, witness, witness, all Christ is the Lord and and to live holy and joyful even as we watch for God for God's heaven New earth, New earth. Pray. Pray. Come, come Lord, Lord Jesus. Jesus. Brothers and brothers and sisters, let us go to God in prayer. Almighty God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer, we come to you in this time. Troubled hearts, 
but open minds, seeking to live into your call to do your good work, listening, hopefully, to your spirit that guides us, seeking to do your will in a world that is in desperate need to be reminded of your love, grace, and hope. Let us be boldly the people you send forth to the world to offer that new life to all people. Lord, we pray for those that we have named today, for those who are sick, for those who are working to be healed. May your healing spirit be upon them. For those who are caregivers, find steady hands and your wisdom filling them each and every day and your grace and your mercy upon them that they can continue to be the healers that we need. God, we pray for all those who suffer loss, whether it is loved ones, whether it is economic, whether it is any number of things, those who suffer trauma and loss. May your spirit of love, hope, and guidance be upon them, reminding them that they, they are held by you. Send us to be the reminders of unity and hope into this world. Send us from here to be those that offer grace and new life to all people. We pray this in the name of Christ, who stands with us this day and every day, teaching us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us for us from evil. Thy kingdom, thy power, Brothers and sisters, go from here. Go from this place to be those filled with the Spirit, living into the call to share our gifts with the world, to unite us all together in our common humanity, uniting us together in that love and grace and hope that is found in Jesus Christ. And as we go from here, may we go with the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the communion and fellowship of the Holy Spirit this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.